Hey Geometries, this is Mr. Bloom and this is Lesson 8.4, Angles of Elevation and Depression. Okay, our objectives. Students will be able to use the angles of elevation and depression to solve problems. Make sure you get that down in your notes. Now, when we're talking about the angle of elevation and depression, the angle that your line of sight makes with a line drawn horizontally, okay, parallel with the earth. So if I'm standing there, okay, this Mr. Bloom standing there, and I'm looking out, there's this line of sight. When I look above the line, that's the angle of elevation. If I look below that line, that's the angle angle of depression. This is depression, and this is elevation. Okay, so that's what we're doing. It is an angle of elevation if the a object is above the horizontal line. Okay, it is an angle of depression if the object is below the horizontal line. Okay, so those are my angles. Now, I want you to think about this, excuse me, and I want you to think about this as um, we are working with lines, you know, remember when we had a transversal, we cut that across, we had angles here, okay, and these lines were parallel to each other, and this was the transversal. So if we had corresponding angles, alternate interior, alternate exterior, and uh, same side, we're looking at this alternate interiors. So alternate interior angles. So if I'm looking, talking about angle 4 and angle 6 are alternate interiors, angle 3 and angle 5 are alternate interiors. And I want you to think about parallel lines in a transversal. The angle of elevation, depression are alternate interiors. So down here at the bottom of this slope is there's an angle of elevation. So this is an angle of elevation. Okay, up here looking down that slope, that's called the angle of depression. Now, I want you um, to keep in mind, there's two S's in depression. Um, let's rewrite that. So I've got angle of depression. Okay, so I want you to keep in mind that this angle and this angle are alternate interior angles and they are the same. That's a necessity for us when we're doing this, studying this section. Now, if I'm looking at the identifying angles of elevation and depression, what is a description of the angle as it relates to the situation shown? By the way, this is a bird. This is a balloon or balloonist. This is a base of a mountain. From the bird's viewpoint, angle one is an angle of depression. Okay. From the balloonist's viewpoint, angle two is an angle, because they're looking above that line, that horizontal line, is an angle of elevation. Okay. So when I do these, I've got angle one's an angle of depression from the bird to the balloon. The bird is looking below the horizontal line coming out that's parallel with earth and here. Okay. I should say relatively parallel with earth. Okay. And angle two, angle of elevation from the balloon to the bird. So angle two's elevation from the balloon to the bird. Now what I want you to do is describe in a like fashion, angle three and angle four. Turn me off and go. Okay, welcome back. Angle three is an angle of depression. It's an angle of depression. I'm looking below that horizontal sight line. Since I'm looking down, it's an angle of depression between the balloon and the mountains, base of the mountain. And then, from angle four, it's an angle of elevation from the mountain base to the balloon. So that's what we have there. Now you can stop me if I'm going too fast for you to write these things down, but make sure you get them down in notes. But that's how we talk about the situations and how they relate with depression and elevation. And we always are talking about whose um, uh, point, of, point of view uh, we have to consider. 
Now, sliding on, using the angle of elevation, how high off the ground is a plane? Okay, so how high off the ground, so we've got my little stick plane, okay, um, is a plane 10,000 feet from the runway. So I'm 10,000 feet, 10,000 feet from the runway. And this is runway. Let's make that black. Okay, that's runway. Runway. Okay, that's my runway. Okay, and at an angle of elevation of 12 degrees. So if I continue my grass and I have my angle of elevation of 12 degrees, okay, from the end of the runway to the plane. So they're asking, how high off the ground? I'm looking for H. So now I have to identify my angle and the things I have. So I stand on my angle and I have 12 degrees, but I'm looking across, which is opposite hypotenuse. So I'm going to use the sine of 12 degrees is equal to my opposite over hypotenuse. So I have 10,000. Okay, sine of 12 is equal to my height. So I'm going to take my trusty calculator and go, well, I've got 10,000 times, and I make sure I got enough zeros in there, times my sine of 12. Okay, and I got 2,079.116. Now, do they ask how elevation? So I'm going to round the nearest foot because it's elevation. But I'm going to put it in 2,079.12 feet is H. So the plane is 2,079 feet high. How high off the ground is the plane? They don't tell me to round to a certain point, so I rounded to the nearest penny. Okay? So that's how high the plane is. How high plane is. Okay? So I got that done. Now... Find the elevation of a ski hill. Boy, we really like those ski hills. They got all this, the runs, the elevation. So find the elevation of the ski hill, okay? So elevation is its height here. So I've got my angle of elevation. My run is 15,000 feet, okay? They want me to find the height. So it's opposite hypotenuse. And again, I'm standing on 15, and I'm looking opposite hypotenuse, and it's going to be sine x over 15,000. Okay, so I got 15,000 sine of 25 is equal to x. Okay, that'll give me the height of my ski hill from the base of the hill to the top. Okay, so I'm looking at this. I got 15,000 times sine of 25. So I've got 6339. So 63. 39.27 feet, okay? So they're asking, find the elevation of the ski hill. I should probably do a word problem. Uh, top of ski hill is at 6,339 feet of elevation. I just say they start at the top of the ski hill is at 6,339 feet. Okay. Wow, that's pretty cool. All right. So the bottom of the ski hill is below that. And depending on how high above sea level is, that's how high it is. But from 6,339 feet, top of the ski hill is, six, is at 6,000. I shouldn't say at. We don't know that. Is 6,339 feet higher than the bottom. Wow, that's pretty nice. Okay, it's over a mile high above where we start. That's a long ski hill. Okay, so we okay with that. If you got questions, let's ask. And the reason why I said it that way is because I don't know that it's that high above sea level, and I've got to be careful about my wording. Okay, so let's look on that next one. Using the angle of depression. To approach runway 17 of Ponca City Municipal Airport in Oklahoma, the pilot must begin a three degree descent. Okay, so we got a three degree descent and this is also three degrees. Okay, all right. 
Starting from a height of 2,714 feet above sea level. Okay, hmm, above sea level. The airport's 1,007 feet above sea level. So we're going to go, um, the airport is, if I got C, so I got sea level, the airport is 1,007 feet above sea level, and the plane is currently... Uh, 2714 above sea level, so I gotta subtract those. So I got 2714, 2714 minus 1007. Seven, okay. So 1707. So my plane is 1707 feet, okay, above the airport. To the nearest tenth of a mile, how far from the runway is the airplane at the start of this approach? Now, when we talk about distance to the runway, all right, how far down to the runway is going to go, um, we are talking about along that hypotenuse, all right? They don't ask, the airport is from, to the nearest tenth of a mile, how far from the runway is the airplane at the start of its approach? So... The start of its approach, how far from the runway, depending on what I'm doing, I could do it, but the plane is actually this far from the runway um, as it's flying down. So I've got to find that distance, H. So I know the numbers I'm going to be working with is here, and I'm looking for its distance, H, okay, my hypotenuse. So I have opposite uh, hypotenuse, which is sine again. Sine of 3 degrees is going to be equal 1707 by my h, my airport, my hypotenuse distance. So h sine of 3 degrees is 1707. Now, if I divide here by sine of 3, I got h is equal to 1707 divided by sine of 3. So I've got uh, 1707 divided by sine of 3. And I have uh, 32,616 feet. Okay. And they say how far the nearest tenth of a mile. Now, this is tricky. Okay. We got to talk about tenths of miles. So first of all, I know in feet, in feet, my airplane is, okay, my length, my hypotenuse, my hypotenuse is 32,616.19969 feet. But I got to switch this over, okay? I got to make it miles, okay? So they are looking at 32,616.199 and some change, okay, feet. And I know that there is 5,280 feet in one mile, so that's what I'm going to do my transfer on. Okay, so now I'm going to divide by 5280, 5,280, and that's going to give me 6.2 miles. Okay, so I am 6.2 miles from, or I should say the plane, the plane is 6.2 miles from the end I can't write the end end at the same time. The end of the runway. Now, keep in mind, why did I do what I did? Please keep in mind, I did this. Oops. I did this part. And I'm going to make that blue. Because they said right here, how far from the runway is the airplane to the nearest tenth of a mile? Okay, nearest tenth of the mile, nearest tenth of a mile. How far is the airplane from the runway? And that's why I did that. And the airplane, how far is it from the miles is its closest distance. And from the nose of the plane to the runway is the furthest, the, how far it is. And that's the closest distance. Otherwise, I'd have to go, you know, do the land uh, distance if I was traveling along. But that's not right because the plane can fly down that strip. Okay, so that's where we're at. So now our next question. Let's see where we're going here. John wants to measure the height of a tree. Okay. John wants to measure. John wants to measure the height of a tree. I've got a tree. Okay. He wants to measure the height of a tree. 
He walks exactly 100 feet from the base. So he is 100 feet out from the base. Okay, this is 100 feet. Okay, and then he looks up. So John is here, and the angles from his eyes. So John's eyes is important. So John has an angle of sight to the tree. Okay, and then he looks up. He looks up to the top of the tree. So that's where we're going. We have a couple triangles to deal with here. Or actually, just one triangle and then some distance. John is six feet tall. We're going to assume that his eyes are at six feet. Six feet to the eyes. Okay. Now, they're asking here, I've got 100 feet. So he's 100 feet from the tree base right here. I want to make sure you recognize the fact that after I find the height here, I have to add in the six feet he stands above the ground to find the height of the tree. So let's get going here. First thing, I know from this angle he's 33 degrees. The angle from his eye to the top of the tree is 33 degrees. So I've got, I'm standing on an angle, I've got opposite adjacent, so I've got tangent of 33 degrees, is going to be opposite over 100, opposite over adjacent, so 100 tan of 33 is equal to x. So I'm going to go 100, I'm going to check my mode, okay, second quit, <laughs> quit, okay, so I'm going to clear this out. I have 100 times tan of 33 degrees. That gives me 64.94 uh, feet, okay? 60, 64.94 feet. Now, do they ask me to, John wants to measure the height of a tree, walks exactly 100 feet from the base of the tree and looks up. The angle from his eyes at the top of the tree is 33 degrees. John is six feet tall. How tall is the tree? Now, they don't tell me what to round it to, so I'm going to round to the nearest hundredth here. Okay, but I have to add in, I'm going to add in, wait a sec, I want to make sure you guys know where I got this, and I'm going to make that black so you guys know that that came from that calculation, and that is X. So this is 64.94 feet, but now this distance is 6 feet, so that's why I'm going to do what I'm going to do, and that's John's height, remember, that's 6 feet. That's John's height. So I'm going to take 6 and add it to 64. So the tree, the tree, so remember 6 plus 64.94 is equal to 70.94 feet. Okay? So the tree, we'll use green. The tree is 70.94 feet tall. Okay, remember I added in John's height and people always go, boom, how do I know? Because I give you stuff like that in the problem, you'll know. Otherwise I'll say angle with ground. Okay, a building is 50 feet high. I've got a building, 50 feet high, 50 feet. At a distance away from the building, an observer notices that the angle of elevation to the top of the building is 41 degrees. A distance away angle to the top of the building. Now, please notice. Notice that the angle of the elevation to the top of the building is 41 degrees. They are assuming that you consider that angle is with the ground. How far is the observer from the base of the building? So they want to find D. So here it's a tangent. So tangent of 41 degrees, okay, is 50 over D, opposite over adjacent. So D is equal to 50 divided by tan of 41. Okay, so we have 50 divided by tan of 41. Okay, and the observer is 57.52. So 57.52 feet away. Okay, that's D. Maybe I should flip flop those. Excuse me. Equals D. So the observer is 57.52 feet away from base of building.
Okay, now, an airplane is flying at a height of two miles above the ground. Okay, an airplane, my stick plane, I love my stick planes, is two miles, this is two miles, okay, above the ground. The distance along the ground from the airplane to the airport is five miles. The distance along the ground to airport, okay, I don't know how else to do that, airport, okay, is five miles, all right? This is five miles. What is the angle of depression? What is the angle of depression from the airplane to the airport? Remember, this angle of depression and this angle are the same. So opposite, adjacent. So I've got to use opposite, adjacent, doing tangent, inverse of opposite over adjacent is going to give me an angle value. So second inverse tangent, 2 divided by 5. Entry, 21.8 degrees. Now, do they say to the nearest? Nope, 21.8 degrees. So this becomes 21.8 degrees. So the angle, angle of depression is 21.8 degrees. Okay. Now, that's what we've got for you today, ladies and gentlemen. We have the summary. Our objective, students will be able to use the angles of elevation and depression to solve problems. Hopefully those went well. Write a couple sentences about the, something that you learned today about the learning objective, then rate yourself on a zero to four scale. And please make sure you're checking off your formal skill just inside your front cover. And keeping in mind, I'm hoping you have a great day. I'm Mr. Bloom, and you're not.